Hi everyone, in today's video I'll be doing a bit of a starter slash reroll guide for those of you who want to open up a new account I'll be telling you kind of what is the things that you should be looking out for uh, and how to optimize your resources etc. Uh, now before we get into the video I guess the first question or well, the first answer I'm going to give is that you know should I even bother trying to reroll for accounts? Uh, this is a gacha game which basically means a lot of the nights you get it by ch chance so you know, yes, if you do have a knight um, in your at the start of the game, that can give you a huge advantage if you get one of the better knights. However, over time, you know, with the probability even now, you are likely to get that knight anyway later on. Um, another thing to note is that in this game, apart from the first eight days and also I think the first golden arrow. Uh, events, which is always going to be Sagittarius Aurorus. Apart from those events, all of the other events are just synced up to where uh, the rest of the uh, server is going. So, for example, uh, right now EU we just released Leo Iki. So even though in the first eight days, I you can see this kind of event. As soon as on the ninth day, this will be synced up to the Leo Iki event, etc. You won't have the ability to replay all of the banners were all of the events that happen in between. So essentially you'll be losing out uh, on a good amount of resources. You know, take EU once again for example, you'll be losing out on about four or five months of resources. So if you're just a casual player, you know, trying to see how far you can go, etc. I would say there's almost no point of trying to reroll for a better account. However, if you want to be a bit more competitive, um, and you know you are not too sure whether it should be rerolling. Uh, what I would suggest is take a look at how far you can only go in Galaxy War. There's both the local server and also the inter server one. Uh, and take a look at the rewards here. Uh, basically, when you try to reroll account, I guess the, what you're really trying to get is that you do a bit better more competitively and you want to be rewarded for doing better competitively as well. Uh, in my opinion, the yellow and the green summon stone are about the same. So in my head, to be honest, there's only two tiers. Well, three tiers. One, if you can always get into top four and top 32, uh, sorry, top four in the local server and top 32 in the Galaxian or inter server version, then that's good because you are going to get the best reward out of all of them. If you can't, and you can only, let's say, in the local server, go somewhere, you know, between 5 to 32, then that's fine. You are not getting the best reward, but you are getting rewarded in some sense. Or maybe the worst uh, scenario is that you can't even break into the top 32 in your local server. So now with that in your head, when you do a reroll count, evaluate. Do you reckon you can comfortably always get slightly better than what your uh, existing account is doing? For example, right now, if I can only be in top eight, or well, I only have a very, very small chance of breaking into top four. Whereas if I do a reroll, uh, I took a look at my competitors and I know I can comfortably get into top four every single time. Then I said, yes, that's worth rerolling. However, let's say if on my existing account, I can only just about break into top 16 or top 32. And on my reroll account, I can't guarantee I'll be in top four either. You know, it's going to be very hard for me to get into top four. I can get into top eight, but not top four. Then from the reward point of view, it's actually going to be the same, right? You're not actually going to get any better rewards. So in that sense, I probably wouldn't recommend you to do a reroll because you are missing out a lot of resources uh, in the middle. Um, so, you know, that's just something to consider on whether you should even be trying to reroll in the first place. Now, um, next thing I'm going to talk about is the timing of when you should be rerolling. Now, I just mentioned that because there's the inter server war where you want to get as high ranking as possible, and right now in the EU, the, the frequency of when a server gets opened is roughly one every week, or one every 10 days, or maybe sometimes even two weeks, I think. Um, so, ideally, you want to be uh, getting into a server. Uh, when is the first server or the second server of that group? So to give an example right now if I go into select server What you can see is that I am right now in the server group 121 to 130 This is the first server in that which why is a good reroll server uh, If I am also in the second server of that group, I think it's probably still doable um, however any later then what it essentially means is that people in the first one or two server it's gonna get like a five or six weeks 
head start compared to you, and that's going to make it really hard to break into top 32 in the inter server glassing wall, unless you cash a lot. So that's probably not worth it. Um, so which is why if you are planning to reroll for competitive reasons, definitely try to do it in the first server or a worst second server of each group of servers, etc. Um, and also then next thing to consider is that how long do you want to keep on rerolling for? Um, normally the goal for rerolling is you want to go for um, light and dark character. That is very important because they allow you to bring in a five element formation, which I will talk about later why that's so good. Um, now, light and dark character is really hard to reroll for. Um, and you know, it could take you ages just to get an account with that. Um, however, time is of essence at the start of the server. Uh, I'll give an example of this account that I've created. Um, I think I've done okay in this account. I didn't get a light and dark character, but I did manage to get uh, two across Huga. Across Huga is one of the golden arrow characters. It's also rare and also pretty strong. Uh, so that's kind of why I went ahead with this account. But I, because I wasn't trying to actively reroll, etc. So I had no idea when the server opened. And when I realized it, uh, the server has already been open for two days. Uh, and I know this because if I go into the monthly sign, I can see I miss out on two rewards and I had to, have to you know, pay money to claim them. So that basically shows that the server was open for two days before this account was made. Right? Uh, I think I've done okay in terms of, you know, uh, I got okay-ish luck. Um, I still didn't get any light and dark character, you know, after the first eight days, well, in the first eight days. Uh, but I got a few good nights every now and then, uh, and I managed to get like a, a wind formation going. Um, so I think I, I done okay, and right now I'm not at chapter 98. However, if I look at the ranking of where I am, you realize I'm only at certified, rank certified, which is pretty bad uh, in comparison. Um, well, actually, now that I look at it, um, so I'm at chapter 97, you know, someone at rank 26 is also 97. So maybe, you know, uh, a lot of people seem to be stuck at this stage. But still, you know, I will only be able to be in the top 30 after a two, two day late start. And that basically means it's not really worth it because uh, I can't really break into top four. So, you know, if I'm really going for competitiveness, this account is probably not worth it. And that basically just shows you the importance of trying to go for uh, an account at the first day rather than trying to drag out for too long. Now, if you need to have an account ready to play in the first day, then I wouldn't, obviously, if you can get a light and dark character, you're sorted, perfect. However, I wouldn't place too much importance on that because it's very likely you may have to settle for one of the other strong characters. And, and by other strong characters, I will give priorities to those who come in Golden Arrow. So your Libra Shuru, your two Sagittarius, your Leo Iki, Akras Hugo, Virgo Shuru. All of them are very good characters. They are also more rare, so it makes sense in long term that you keep an account which meant you roll one of them. Um, if you still can't get any of that, uh, then try to go for at least account with the Deathmark. Deathmark is probably one of the best, uh, I'll say kind of like free knights for the more common knights um, that you can get. It's definitely the best one. And one thing with Deathmark you can do is that if you manage to get Deathmark at the beginning, uh, there is also an event where on the second day, you get to pick any gold knight that you want. So you also pick a Deathmark here. So now that you get two copies of Deathmask, uh, then what you can do is if you want to put money into the game, uh, there's also this special offer for the starter pack where you can get a six star Deathmark. So that's equivalent to another two copies. So with that, you have four copies of Deathmark that can get you enough to uh, eight star to then go on to nine star if you have food, etc. And then you can unlock your um, constellation. Uh, and Deathmask with his constellation unlock is super strong. So that's also a very viable route. And you know, from what I've seen, I think a lot of people go for this tactic, um, as well as obviously trying to go for a lot of that. Uh, if I just look at the top five players here, you know, 10 star Deathmask, 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 right? Everyone's using this tactic. So just try to, um, you know, if you are really settled, on, I want to account on the first day of the server because I want to get this advantage in terms of timing rather than just go for a lot of that character, then Deathmask is a 
quite a good full back option, I guess. All right, uh, but obviously priority is right to dark, and the reason why light the dark is so good uh, is because if you go into formation, normally you want to always get formation bonus. Uh, but what you notice is a lot of the formation bonus require knight of the same element. Uh, if you don't have a light and dark character. If you have a light and dark, you can do this thing of five knights of different element, and that is super, super uh, advantageous because if I go into Hoth Knights, for me to level up a wind character, I need to, you know, put other wind character in, right? I can't just, I have to put in an air knight. I can't just put in other elements. So right now you can see is that I have a formation which is predominantly wind because I'm trying to get this formation bonus. However, I wouldn't have enough food for me to um, start ranking up everyone because you know I just wouldn't have that many knights, air or wind knights available. Um, so, which is why you know in my resonance, what you can see is that even though I feel in uh, predominantly wind formation. In my resonance, I only I try to keep one knight of each color here, uh, rather than trying to go for all wind because I know if I put all wind, I'm gonna be really really soon capped by what's the maximum level I can level up on my knight. Um, however, if you do this, what that means is that in your resonance, you are trying to level up five characters at once. You try to do you know three knights of um, you try to cover basically all four different elements. So you do two knots of the same element and the other three knots are all different elements, etc. Uh, but then that means there's always going to be kind of like two or three knots which you put in the resonance have really high level, but you will hardly be using them. And that's a waste. And what a light and dark character is able to allow you to do is to make sure that every single knot you put in the resonance it's going to be the actual knight that you want to be using every single day as well in the battle. So that just basically helps you to align your resources to the actual uh, formation that you'll be using all the time. And that's why Light and Dark is super adventurous um, at the start. Um, and that's what people normally try to reroll for, etc. Alright, um, so this is normally what you want to do. Now, once obviously the standard process for reroll is that you clear the story map. Then once the story map finished, you go into uh, Redemption Code, you put in all the code you know, you get as much resources, diamonds, knife fragments as possible out of that. Uh, if you still don't have enough, then try to clear a few stages, collect all of your diamonds from the handbook, remember? Once you have all of those diamonds, what you can then do is to re-roll your knights, right? So you summon um, 10 knights with your you know, 2700 diamonds and see what you can get a light and dark character. If you do, then great, keep it. Uh, if not, then you can try re-roll or maybe decide whether you want to settle with whoever you got. Etc. Now, in the first eight days, I would recommend you to always spend diamonds on the uh, summoning knights, etc. You want to do this because you essentially want to clear all of the start events. And some of the start events is basically saying that you need to upgrade certain knights to certain levels and you want to um, get 40 or 65 diamonds. So you definitely want to clear all of them. Um, so spend all of your diamonds on uh, summoning and try to uh, basically clear all the events. Now, uh, if you are struggling to clear the 8 star uh, knights events, um, which is difficult because you need four knights of this, uh, four copies of a single knight, what you can do is you can actually uh, use some food as an option to clear that event. Uh, so basically, for example, here I have Leo Iki. Uh, this is a six star one, so that's equivalent to two copies. Um, those, because they are food, they, you get them a lot more often. So it's much easier for you to get them to uh, A star before anyone else, before any of the gold knights or silver knights, etc. So you can definitely do that. And don't worry about, you know, leveling up of food uh, so early on because all food will be used, you know. Once you have an A star knight, in order to get him to nine star, you need to use an A star food anyway. So you know, definitely don't worry about trying to even you know prioritize food to uh, A star before your actual knights just to clear the event. I think it's worth it, and the reason why I think it's worth it is because um, they will give you gold accessories, and gold accessories are super important. 
Um, I would recommend because at the early stage of the game, you wouldn't have enough materials to power up your accessory. I do not recommend level up any accessory which are not gold. You only ever ever want to level up gold or red accessories, and that's why at the start of the game, when there's so many limited routes where you can get gold accessories, you really want to clear off those events who are able to give you that. Uh, Upgrade three A star nice to nice star. This is ridiculous. I have never been able to clear this uh, on without like f on any free to play re rolls etc. So don't worry about this one. You, I don't think you can clear this unless you put quite a bit of money in. But all of the other ones you should be clearing off them to get the maximum rewards etc. Um, so this is what happens in the first eight days. And like I said, by the end of the uh, first eight days, I think that's when you need to evaluate whether this account is worth keeping on them by looking at how you are ranked comparatively to everyone else. Take a look at the top four or five characters, uh, four or five players uh, in the server. Do you think you have a comfortable chance to be in line with them? Or maybe take a look at top ten. So you know. If you get lucky, you can sometimes break in the top four, etc. Uh, but we really need to make that evaluation to decide on whether that's really something you want to keep on going. Um, and that's the main thing I will think. Uh, I will say that you need to bear in mind when you try to reroll for account. Now, if you just want to have a benchmark of what's a successful reroll, you know, without considering all any of the external factor. I would say a successful reroll is once again take my account right now. I didn't pay too much attention to it. Just sometimes a few a uh, few hours when I was busy, I didn't collect the rewards and I kind of lost out on the cap, etc. Um, but I still managed to get into chapter nine. So I would probably say you know uh, end of chapter eight, start of chapter nine is probably a good benchmark to decide on whether you have done well in your reroll account. Um, Dimension of Exile, once again I'm on level 97, so I'll say similar kind of thing, you know, late 80s or early 90s, that's probably a good benchmark to see whether you are making good progress on your reroll count. And in terms of the level of the nice, I think you need to have at least level 100, reach level 100 in the resonance levels, etc. So I think those will be some good benchmark for you to tell whether your reroll has won well or not. But the most important thing is still to look at comparatively how are your competitors doing. Um, all right, so those are for the first eight days. Once we decided this is an account that you think is worth keeping, and you do want to keep on playing with it, uh, I would suggest you still spend all of your diamonds on summoning. You spend it on summoning knights all the way till uh, all of the knights in your resonance are. Uh, um, at least 10 stars. This is because before 10 stars, you can always start rank up your knights by giving them food of the same color. So even if I didn't roll an ideal knight uh, when I summon in due to whatever you know, probabilities or chance, um, the food are not wasted because I can still feed them. Exactly. So it's always worth it. Once you reach uh, 10 star, you actually need 4 copies of the same knight to get it to uh, 11 star. So that's actually a bit of a bottleneck. You are normally going to be stuck there for quite a while because that's kind of like all chance. And I wouldn't recommend you spending lots of diamonds on you know, something which is completely luck dependent. So I would suggest spend off your diamonds on summoning until you have everyone in resonance to 10 star. Once everyone in resonance in 10 star, just park here, just start saving up of your diamonds. Because what the next thing you want to wait for is you want to wait for um, 1440, chapter 1440. That's when there's something called like divine will, which will be opened here. Uh, at that stage, you are able to pick a character that you want to use. Uh, what you want to focus on, and you have a pity chance. You know, after seventy rolls, if you still don't get it, you get you are guaranteed that night. Um, so you want to start saving diamonds for that. Uh, and the night you want to pick the Sea Dragon Cannon. Um, you can check out my tier list where I briefly talk about how good he is. He will make a massive difference. So you definitely want him. And a single copy is fine. Um, but divine stones are expensive. In order to get seventy rolls, you need I think like thirty five thousand. Diamond, so definitely start saving up once you have your 10 star knights, etc. Save all of your diamonds for this divine storm. Once that's open, get Sea Dragon Cannon. That will help you to clear another one or two chapter. And then you can start getting red accessories. 
Red accessories are super useful, so at that stage, I'll probably recommend uh, spending diamonds to buy red accessories either in shops or in the 12 palaces, etc. Um, and then from once you have a set of red uh, accessories for every single one of your knights, then uh, the rest of diamonds is really up to you to whatever you want to. You can buy Omega Stones, you can save up for more Divine Stones to get other Knights. Completely up to you, it doesn't really matter that much from that point onwards. Um, but yeah, so those are the main things I think you need to look out for when you decide to reroll or start a new account.